I'm gonna go back and I'm ed gonna edit it. <laughs> hey y'all, I'm Madeline Monahan, but you can call me Maddie. Welcome back to my channel. And for the next two days, I'm going to be writing short stories. So the way that this is gonna work for this little experiment, um, I have two prompts provided by the lovely and amazing Helene Foy, who is a fellow author to newbie. And uh, so I'm going to randomly select those prompts and then I'm going to decide whether I'm going to be writing them in uh, your standard narrative form or if I'm going to be writing them as a script or a screenplay. Um, and then if I get the narrative form, it, I then have to decide whether I'm doing first person or third person. So I will be doing one story today in one format and one story today in a different format. Let's see what prompt I get today. Alright, so these are the prompts. I'm just gonna shake them up, toss them up, and catch one. My first story has to include wood smoke, laughter, a crow's nest, and a silver coin. I'm thinking pirates. It's gonna be a narrative. Third person. Woo! All right, I think that actually might be easier for this. There we go, there is my first short story of the day. A short story with wood smoke, laughter, or crow's nest as a narrative in third person. So let's get cracking. short story that I'm writing now versus the short story that I wrote previously, like the one I wrote for my creative writing class, is given the nature of this one, uh, just what it's about and kind of how it's going, um, it is going to be longer. And my short story that I wrote for school ended up being about 3,600 words in total. But it was just supposed to be kind of like a light, happy, fluffy, kind of romantic, goofy uh, short story. Given the story, the fact that, you know, I have these two main characters and I have to explain how they're connected and why they're connected, I kind of have to go into some like backstory stuff. It is just going to be slightly longer, I feel like, than, um, than the one I wrote for school. I am completely, totally, I said this before, I'm totally pantsing this though. I have no idea where this story is going. It's an adventure for me and an adventure for the characters because we just have no idea where the heck we're going or how this is gonna end. so far and I have the silver coin. I kind of have wood smoke. I was going to make the mention of wood smoke a little bit later but I still need a crow's nest so I have an idea for that part. I'm at that stage though in the writing where my focus is starting to dwindle. I did not get a good night's sleep last night. I'm um, on fire. <laughs> Uh, literally, not literally, but kind of literally. Um, I did get a pretty bad uh, sunburn yesterday when I was at the river. So I finally, I finally hit 1,500 words. Um, I'm almost out of this like little kind of flashback um, part. Something that I've noticed, and I did this on my other short story too, was um, I do this thing where I start off in the present and I have the character kind of where they are now and then I go back and talk about a little bit of how they got there and how they know this other person. Um, and I realized that I am doing that again here with this story because uh, my first short story was about uh, a young woman who was a, a writer in New York and she had like just moved up there and quarantine happened, so it's kind of it was kind of it's kind of like a little fun story about being stuck in a tiny apartment with 
someone who you were at odds with for years. Um, but some, but basically, she's stuck in this apartment with uh, a childhood friend of hers, uh, who they used to like fight all the time and butt heads, and only recently really started getting along and everything. But he was also up in New York too, and so when they said that you had to quarantine and self uh, self isolation and stuff, he was like, "Oh, let's do it together." And then. They just get bored, and things happen, romance, it's kind of funny and fluffy and cute. Um, but basically the way that I told that story was it starts off in, with them kind of messing with each other. Not like that, goofing off with each other and basically he's being annoying and she just wants to read. Um, is how it starts, but then it goes back to saying like how they know each other, how they became friends, kind of what their childhood was like, and then it goes back into the present. And I realized I'm using that same exact structure here, where I'm starting kind of in the present, like of the story, in terms of the story, and am going into the, um, what's it called? <laughs> I'm going I'm starting in the present and then kind of going into the past and explaining how she got in this place so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that I've done that structure twice um, for some reason it's just it's a structure that I feel like makes sense with the stories that I'm telling but I realize that I don't, I, you know, I don't want to use it too much because I don't want it to get old. She thought back at that young girl she left behind in England. Always happy, always adventurous, wanting to see the rest of the world. The woman who stood on the beach now had seen the world, seen it for what it was. She had seen the crystal blue waters turned black and red, been burned by the heat of the sun, and has swallowed the salt of the sea in a struggle to survive and break the surface. The world was nothing like Freddy's and the other sailors' stories. The world was much more unforgiving. And if the world was unforgiving, why shouldn't Elise be too? I'm very proud of that little, <laughs> that little paragraph. I don't know why, I just really like it. All right, so I just got to my mention of a crow's nest um, because my character's position on the ship or where she uh, is stationed on the ship is in the crow's nest. She is the lookout. I just have to figure out the wood smoke. And the thing is with the wood smoke, because earlier I had them like around a fire, and the thing with wood smoke is I'm thinking more in terms of the smoke that you smell during like an attack so like the wood smoke is like the ship burning and so that's just what I imagined when I heard that I know I think I think Helene might have been going a little bit more for like just like a nice cozy fire um, but <laughs> my mind was like cannons sinking ships pirates because that's where my mind goes we're about to have some action which is why I bring that up because now she's in the crow's nest, she's on the ship. So now stuff's gonna happen. I'm really tired. <laughs> um, I'm still enjoying this story though. I am trying to get it done because I am getting to the, the climax of the story. So I feel like if I just keep going, if I keep this ball rolling, I'll get there and it'll be great. Fingers crossed, though. I am getting really tired, <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. I almost forgot the wood smoke. I'm coming up towards the end of the story, and I almost forgot to mention the wood, wood smoke, so I like went back paragraph. It was like, smoke swirled around her. <laughs> Alright, so I think I got everything now. I have wood smoke, laughter, a crow's nest, and a silver coin. Now I just have to wrap this story up and then I will be done with my first prompt and my first day, so... Home stretch! Let's go! Let's go! I don't know what that was, but let's go! Woo! I, I don't know if you guys can hear me, I'm being a little bit quiet because Steven's in the other room um, doing his thing and I'm in here doing mine. But I am finished with my first prompt 
I got all of the uh, elements in it. The wood smoke, the lacquer, silver coin, and crow's nest. My final word count, 3,832, so 3,832. That's a lot for one day. So that is the end of day one of my two day prompt journey. So I will see you guys tomorrow for day two and a different genre, well, maybe not a different genre, but different time period, different characters, different style. So see you all tomorrow. Welcome to day two. Today I'm doing the second prompt. I'm a little tired and I'm a little frustrated because uh, my computer, I also have Avatar on. Hey, Avatar. Um, my computer is a very old, oh, also my Moss Eisley shirt. Anyway, my computer is a very old MacBook and the storage on it is almost up and it won't take any more videos <laughs> until I clear it out. But the problem is, is that the external hard drive I bought to solve this problem is not compatible with my Mac. So I spent 90 freaking dollars on a hard drive that doesn't work on my Mac. If you all can ignore the avatar in the background. Today, what we're going to do is we're gonna do the other prompt. Now, it's not really a surprise today because, you know, there were only two of them and I now know what format and what the other prompt is, but I'm still going to share because that's what we do here. So let us start with that. So the prompt for the today is have a story that includes raindrops, messy braids, galloping horse hooves, and broken glass. Style is going to be in screenplay or script format. So there's my short story from yesterday. We're gonna go new. See what I mean? It keeps doing this and I'm like I know I'm trying. Anyway, sorry, it's very frustrating. Uh, Google Docs. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna try and get as close to a screenplay format as I can with this. So the short story I did yesterday, the prompt was kind of hinting at pirates or like high sea stories, at least for me it was. Today's prompt is one of those where it could go either way, but I'm thinking kind of a more medieval time period. So the flowy dresses and the flowy hair and the flowy flows and the knights, the knights who say knee. Or until recently said knee. So once again, I am at a place where I am completely pantsing this. I have absolutely no idea how the heck this is going to go, where it's going to go. The thing was yesterday when I was writing it, it all just sort of came to me. So I'm hoping that that happens again today. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll be even better than the one I wrote yesterday. <laughs> you see how I can't get through that sentence? <laughs> I'm going to take a nap after this. Maybe that's what I need is a nap. different about writing it especially in a document that's not formatted automatically to be in screenplay form is that it's taken me a lot longer to kind of figure out how I want this story to go um and just to write it in general and to find a good flow for it because I'm constantly having to put the you know the cursor in the middle hit the tab button so I get the formatting correct and it sort of takes away from like the flow of everything so far I only have one of the things in I have galloping horse hose I need broken glass messy braids and raindrops and yeah <laughs> I'm not there yet <laughs> we'll see how this goes I got raindrops Yay! So I have two of the five, four things. I have galloping horse hooves and raindrops, so I need messy braids and broken glass. And it is now noon. I have my applesauce over there that I really want to eat because it's blueberry applesauce and it's really tasty. 
but I'm gonna try and write a little bit more before I eat my applesauce. So that will be my reward. My blueberry applesauce is my reward for writing a little bit more. Yay. <laughs> it's a weird incentive, but hey, whatever works. I'm taking a much needed mental break and doing some workouts because I've hit a block with my, oh my god, I'm so sweaty. I hit a block with um, this short story and I, I don't know why. It's almost like even though I had an idea of how I wanted it to start, I can't even get an idea of how it's going to go or going to end and so... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it'll be interesting when I actually finish it. Oh my god, I'm so gross. I'm sorry. But it'll be interesting when I finally finish it. And just kind of sit and compare the two and see really which one. I mean, I already have an idea of which one I liked better. See, <laughs> I have to <laughs> compose myself for a minute. So I'm eating <laughs> hot and spicy beef jerky and it's building <laughs> a lot of seconds. Okay, I am at 1,607 words, which is like nothing compared to what I wrote yesterday. But I kind of feel like I've gone as far as I can go now in this format with this story. I think I'm going to sit on it, leave it alone for a few more hours, maybe tomorrow morning um, after I've slept and hopefully slept well because my sunburns aren't as painful today. I'll sit down and compare the two and share a little bit more about my experience doing these two very different short stories in two days and stuff like that. So, oh, the spice, it's coming back. So I will see you guys tomorrow morning for my final thoughts and hopefully a USB drive that I can clear my computer up on. So <laughs> see you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning. It is now the next day. I guess this two-day experiment has turned into a three-day experiment, considering I'm filming my conclusion on a third day. Well, the first short story definitely turned out a lot better than the second, and I felt like I had more of a conclusion, I guess? So I felt the story felt a little bit more whole. I mean, granted, it's a first draft. They're both first drafts, so they're nowhere near perfect. But I feel like my first short story is something that I have a good baseline for if I want to go further with it or if I want to turn it into like a full-fledged novel um, or if I want to keep it a short story. I feel like that there is a solid story there. My second one, I do not feel that way. I was really... When I was writing it, I just didn't feel like I ever really found the flow for it. And I thought it was because it was in screenplay format, but I've written a lot of like short screenplays in the past and I've never had a problem with finding the flow for it. I've lost the flow and I've gotten stuck, but I've never had a problem finding it. And so I think it was the way that I was telling the story and the elements in the story. Um, I am not good when it comes to magic and explaining magic and I tried putting magic in it and I think that's what tripped me up is I gave my main character supernatural powers basically and I am not good at writing that kind of stuff. I am not very creative when it comes to magic for some reason. That's the one thing my imagination just cannot go wild with. Um, I try, but it never, it never turns out right. And so I think that was my problem was that I was so busy trying to figure out how to work this magic and have it fit in and explain what it was or how it worked and it just sort of turned into a mess. So I think what I would do for my second short story is I would definitely go back and I would actually try writing it as a narrative um, as opposed to a screenplay because I think it's a story that would fit better in a narrative format. See if 
that gets its flow a little more and take away the magic not have any magic because the magic was a bad that was a bad 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 choice i should not have done that overall i'd say this little experiment has been a lot of fun it's been crazy to think that i've been able to write two short stories in the span of 48 hours that is a little bit wild to me i think the total word count came probably around something ooh, probably just shy of if not 5,000 words in total um and that's pretty good for me i haven't been writing like crazy lately and it, so it was kind of nice and exhausting but nice to get back into that i'm writing you know 3,000 anywhere from like a thousand to 3,000 words a day routine and that was a lot of fun and i really enjoyed the prompts i had because it's funny how just a small set of words can set off your imagination. You just hear something and immediately you're like, I can see it, I can picture it, I can see the story that has these things in it. And it's a lot of fun to sit down and have it, you know, come to fruition. Even if it's not fully what you wanted it to start out as, it's still just great. To, it's a great feeling to you know, have your imagination in front of you on paper and it's all thanks to a small set of words. I would definitely do this again. I would definitely do it again. Also, I want to say thank you to Helene Foy for coming up with these prompts and for letting me use them. Without you, this video and my exhaustion would not be happening and I gladly accept the exhaustion, so thank you. <laughs> I'm curious to know if you guys like writing short stories. Do they evolve into full-length novels? Do you keep them short stories? Are they all genres? Are they one genre? Are they a continuation of each other? I am just very curious to know because I am loving the short story. I'm kind of in a short story phase. I don't know if I'm ever gonna phase out of it. I, I'm really enjoying it. I really do love these short stories and I love writing them and it's really nice to have like the prompts and everything. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, if you want to see uh, another writing experiment of any kind, go ahead and leave a comment down below, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Is it a bad time to mention I'm debating whether you're doing a 12 hour write-a-thon? See, I keep suggesting these things to myself and then my brain is like, no, you crazy!